welcome to another Run On Air video. In this episode I'm going to start a new series which is all about the Kawai K1 synthesizer. It's a late 80s digital synth which is really quite different from practically anything that's out there. It's something I've been wanting to look at for quite some time but there's one catch. I don't have one that works properly. So in this video I'll be looking at what I've got and how I can cobble them together to get a fully working device. Then in the next episode we'll start having a proper look at it. So if you'd like to see how that progresses and like to see me get into the details of how the synth works and various approaches to programming it, then please consider subscribing and also if you get something from this then please drop a like. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, then please head over to my Bandcamp and Spotify where I've got my latest release, which includes music from the channel. So enough about that, let's get into it. I've got two K12s or K1 Mark IIs, depending on how you read it. Uh, K12 doesn't really make sense, does it? One of them physically doesn't look very good. So the one at the bottom here is quite dirty. There's certainly some signs of water damage on the keys. It's got that sort of water residue to it. There's also uh, two broken keys. And when I plug it in, I get a lot of distortion, both from the headphone and the line out. In fact, the line out doesn't seem to work at all. The level control is very gritty um, and I suspect some water has got in there as well. Yeah, it's worth saying that they, they both turn on, you get the display on both of them, so that's quite a good thing. The top one has a quite a unique problem. Every eighth note has this sort of digital distortion which sounds like it's been circuit bent or, or something like that. It's like it's, uh, you know, the numbers aren't being crunched quite properly. So I'm going to see if I can get one working keyboard and the other one I'll just sell on eBay for spares. Now I've got it open, you can see the water damage and it's affected the front of the keyboard more than anything, plus the front of the main board. But it doesn't seem to have affected the back quite so much. Can't really see any watermarks there at all. So I'll need to lift it out to have a look, check the other side and have a more detailed examination. So in the area of the volume control, again, there doesn't seem to be too much water damage here, but I think it's got into the actual slider itself. So it might just be a case of replacing the slider that will fix that. So when you actually take the board out and you have a look, it's pretty clean. There's very little water damage or any signs of water at all, which is really lucky when you think about it. So I think the main idea then is really to swap the boards over and see if we can get one working unit. Well, good news, I have swapped the motherboard over and it's working really nicely. The digital distortion problem is gone and I'm using the motherboard which was from the water damaged keyboard and amazingly that works absolutely fine. And it just so happens that all the other functions, the switches and the volume control all work fine on the non-water damaged synth. So it's a great combination putting the two together. I was a little worried that I was just going to end up with two that didn't work. I think I was quite lucky with this one because when I got the first K1 it was sold as fully working and I don't think it was really their fault. It was It's quite a subtle problem, the note thing, so they probably just turned it on, bashed a few chords out and didn't really notice there was a problem. But it did mean that I was able to get half my money back, so that was kind of good. When I looked into trying to fix it, it, it just looked like it was going to be too complicated for me to be able to do. So it just sort of sat in storage for a while and then eventually another one came up which was sold as not working 
Um, so I was able to get a good price and I was just hoping that with the little information I knew that it would be possible to do something as simple as just swap out the main board and I was lucky that did actually work out. But when I opened up the case and I saw the water damage, then I didn't feel very confident that it was going to pan out. So yeah, I think it was kind of lucky and sometimes these things work for you and sometimes they don't and that's just the way it is. So, so now I'm really looking forward to actually trying the synth out. It's quite an unusual one. I won't go into any details now, but if you want to find out how that progresses, then please consider subscribing and hopefully I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, bye.